We're at Ash 4x4 today, testing out the terrain response. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to see all of the terrain response modes reviewed. Hi, we're here today at Hawksman Park with Billy from Ash 4x4. Billy's going to give us some understanding and tips on how our electronic systems are working. You might, be, might have seen my videos as well where I have my Land Rover to Silver 3 I've had it for a couple of years now, but I've never fully really understood what all those different terrain response modes and what all the electronics do. Hi, welcome. Uh, they say I'm Billy from Asheville before, it's good to see you. Hopefully we'll go on with a little bit more knowledge than when we came at the end of it, at the start. We do 4x4 driver training here, we also do 4x4 experiences and we encourage groups, uh, 4x4 groups to come and have the day with us and have a bit of fun, test the vehicles and see what they can do in control. On your yep. terrain response, you've got a number of settings. I have. If you'd like to tell me what they are, please. Oh, now, now, now you're making me think about it. So, okay, so on that knob I've got the grass, gravel and snow, the mud and ruts, the sand and the rock crawl. Excellent. One more. One more. Uh, you use it every day of the week. Oh, it's yeah. called the general setting. Oh, the general <laughs> setting, so I don't know what thought it was. So you're in your normal general setting and that's for normal on-road use and it will help you out on a little bit of off-road as well. So what we're going to do today, I think the best way of starting this one is if we jump straight through to grass, gravel and snow. And let's make it even easier because all of those three grounds which we've just done, grass, gravel and snow, mm -hmm. are all similar driving responses. We need to do certain things for them. In grass, gravel, snow, one or two of those functions are going to change ever so slightly to help us. Gentle on the throttle. Yep. When we turn across, and you will feel it when we go out driving your vehicle later, it will feel as if there's nothing there really. It will become less responsive at the beginning. And this is so it can deliver the correct amount of torque to the wheels so that we don't induce a wheel spin when we're pulling off. The last thing we want is to polish the snow, make it into ice, mm -hmm. and then start slipping. It also, um, when we're driving along, if we lift off on the throttle, where there would be a suddenness for the car to do a sudden movement, because we want to be as soon yep. as possible, there's a backup filter, and it eliminates oh. that snatchy feeling that goes off, so we back off the throttle easier as well. We're keeping everything as smooth as we can. Other bits that people miss out on this grass, gravel, and snow setting is that also the other thing that can happen is that your front headlights can get covered over in the snow and can get dirty by the vehicle in front. So this also in the snow setting, it increases the, uh, the wash wipe uh, ratio on your headlamps when you're doing the screen. It does indeed, yes. So I guess the only way we can really prove if any of that works is to go out and have a go. Okay. So, here we are, out of the classroom, and uh, let's put a bit of the theory into practice, shall we? So, I'm guessing we're in low ratio, are we? Yep, we're in low ratio, and I'm in the, uh, the raised off-road off uh, Raised off-road position. Now what I'd like you to do is move it across to the first setting, out of general settings into... The uh, snow and uh, gravel, grass and gravel. Grass, gravel, snow indeed. So that's lit up. Has anything come up on your um, yep. instrument panel? I can see it tells me on main instrument panel is grass, gravel and snow. I can also see on here, it's showing me on here as well, I've got the uh, the picture with it. And I can see as well that I've on my low and I have my two diff locks sh 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 currently shown as green and open. And anything about hill descent? Um, it's not put it in on this model, we did in... It's in on yellow? Yeah, so hill descent is on, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I thought so. Well that's good, it shows everything's working. So, it's not about the driver this bit, this is about the vehicle. Yep. What I want you to do in a minute is, when you've popped this window up, gentle 
acceleration. Tell us what it feels like. You've okay. driven down here in your general mode. How was that? It was fine. It was fine. It's fine. No real problem. Okay. So now you, what you're going to compare is your initial pull off and driving to what you've experienced in general mode. So let's close the window to make sure we get no branches coming in or anything falling out. And we're in the uh, the snow, gravel, and grass mode into drive. And let's just see what it's like if I pull away with gentle throttle. Hey, actually, initially, even if I put my foot down on that first piece, it hardly moves at all. It's a lot less, um, a lot less aggressive, and it's um, moving a lot more smoothly. Uh, increasing that power a little bit now, and uh, yeah, I can feel that it's still um, moving. Right. So what we're going to do now is. Go back again, yeah. bring it on the grass, and we'll drive as, I'll explain how we'll drive a bit, it's going to be foot, foot down, and with any luck there shouldn't be any wheel spin. So on this it's one, cool, now, on some of the vehicles we've got something called low traction uh, control. Well, you haven't got it on here, and what would normally happen is it would give you, it's on most of the smaller the SUV vehicles. Uh -huh. Uh, it helps people that are on grass to get some traction to get off. Now we discussed in the classroom that what we would be doing now is gentle on the throttle on the grass, gravel and snow so we don't avoid any wheel slip. What I want you to do now when you set off is imagine that you've been out all day, it's been raining all day, the vehicle's been left on grass, you're worried about getting stuck Yep. So the natural reaction is to put your foot down and get yourself off the grass. So what we're going to do now is see what happens when you put your foot down to get yourself off the grass. Okay, so we're going to see what it's like pretending I'm trying to get out of the car park at Glastonbury. Um, I'm still in the, uh, in the same um, grass gravel and snow mode. Window up, in here. Okay, let's draw it now and see what happens. little tiny tiny bit of spin there but virtually nothing it was really uh, again um, smooth no problems at all so what we had there was from it being floored straight away there was no wheel spin whatsoever as he pulled off once we got the revs up and we got a little bit of traction on board we saw that we did get a little bit of wheel spin on uh, the rear offside wheel but it was corrected very quickly by the vehicle braking hard to pull it back into line and get the traction going back through both vehicles so I guess you can say that so far, it seems to be doing what we said in the classroom. We're now going to talk, now that we've mastered grass, gravel, snow, we're going to talk about mud and ruts. So, how do you drive in mud and ruts? Okay, so... Um, we'll stick with mud, make it easier. So, again, for me, it, it very much depends on on what the situation with the mud. I mean, if I'm thinking back to my older vehicles, obviously it's important to have a good set of tyres. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty much going to get nowhere. Um, Don't divert me. Yeah. We're not doing tyres. We're, We're not doing vehicle. <laughs> Terrain response. <laughs> um, um, normally, I'd say that I actually want to have quite. Uh, I want to have quite quite a large amount of power, I want to be able to sort of push through that mud, I want to be able to a little bit of wheel spin or slip to make sure I'm getting the mud that's going to be sort of flying out from that tyre to actually allow me to get some traction and potentially get the, the wheel down to something that maybe is a bit more solid underneath. And that's pretty much what we want to do with our setting. So if we turn the dial around to mud and ruts, and what have we got straight away? Again, at the beginning, your throttle response will be very similar to that of grass, gravel, and snow. It'll be a 20, 25% back off, so it's a smooth pull off. Once we've pulled off, you'll get a more aggressive throttle pedal again to work with. Mud and ruts, I have a nickname for it when I'm taking people around to get people to remember it. I call it the cannabis setting. The cannabis setting. The vehicle is chilled out and relaxed. Remember we spoke earlier about um, moving from general settings mm -hmm. to uh, grass, gravel and snow and it moved up to a seven? Now it's down to a three. 
And there's a number of reasons why it's got to go that way. We know when we're driving through mud, especially thick, gloopy mud, we know that the vehicle is going to slide from side to side, that wheels are going to spin, and that we want to push through. We're not going to go through in a nice, controlled, straight line. That's at odds with what the vehicle's been built to do. So your dynamic stability control, if we left everything in general yeah. setting, just at the moment you want power and you want to push through, dynamic stability control is going to jump in and say, I've saved you. Cut He's going to pull off. the throttle pedal. Has it happened to you? Yeah, it has. It has. I think, I'm going, I'm going. No, it's not going. <laughs> and I think it's even worse when the crowds around it are watching you, are telling you to go for it, more throttle, more throttle, and your foot's on the floor and you can feel the engine dying. So that's dynamic stability control cutting in. What does dynamic stability control do, I hear you say? Prevents understeer and oversteer. What does that mean in real life? It's going to start applying the brakes. It's going to start cutting the power because it doesn't want you to crash the vehicle or danger endanger yourself. So in modern roads, we need to pull that back a little bit. We need to tell you to chill out and relax a bit. So it's going to allow the vehicle to move, allow the wheels to spin a little bit more, um, and overall try and get us through there. Again, the throttle opening um, is more responsive when we go, when we lift off the throttle. We don't get that sudden when we're in the grass gravel and snow where it's slow yes. and gentle, it's a little bit more aggressive now there just to, 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 to list us off. The sensitive to slip on the, on the wheel slipping, again, it's chilled back, it's dialed back. The whole car is chilled. Hill descent control is on and you will find that there will be slightly more aggressive braking with hill descent control on. Um, just as an extra feature of it. And when the brakes do come on in the mud, again, it'll be more of a decisive brake coming on to try and cut through the mud to give you the grip that's needed to get through on that side of it. There we are. Okay. So you've so now got mud and ruts. Let's go and try it out now, see how that's going to work, see if we can get some wheel spin, I guess. <laughs> So we're now going to move across to our next setting on your dial, which is mud and ruts. Mud and ruts. So if we turn to that, you'll get a few instructions on the dash. What is it telling you there? Mud and ruts. Program selected. It telling you anything on gears or anything there? Uh, no. No. Okay. So you will be setting off in first gear in mud and ruts as normal. Our hill descent is on again, and it's showing. Obviously, you've got the graphics up there as well. So again, this time, it's not about the driver, it's about the vehicle first and foremost. What do we expect to happen in mud and ruts? I'll give you a clue, this is the cannabis setting. Yeah, so it's going to be chilled out. It's going to be chilled out indeed. We'll leave dynamic stability control on because the vehicle, we want to show that the vehicle has altered that slightly as well. And unfortunately, we don't really want to see your driving prowess at this stage. Okay. So we're going to let the vehicle do the work. Uh, when you're ready, pop it into drive, gentle, just a little touch of throttle, take your time going up the hill and we'll be taking the hill on the left. Okay, Good okay. luck. Thanks a lot. <laughs> right, let's see how that goes as well. So we're in the uh, mud and ruts, we're into drive and we're going to just drive it smoothly and slowly up here, round to the left he said as well. So let's see how this works. Oh, he's telling me to go nice and steady and slow, so we're just on that real slow and steady, just like that. Oh, and we're going round, oh, it's quite a steep hill, we've got to go up, and there's some ruts in there as well. Hopefully that branch doesn't get my uh, roof rack with a spare wheel on the top. Let's just see where we're going with this here. We're going slowly and steadily, I've got my wheel slightly to the side. We're just checking with Billy, let's make sure that those are there. Interestingly. Interestingly, my uh, diff locks have come in and shown that they're locked as well. So how's that for you? Oh, so far so good. I can see that the uh, diff locks came in both on the centre and the rear. I could feel that as I was just getting to here though, I was losing traction. I could feel the wheels were starting to, well, or more than starting to slip. They were, they were starting to so, be difficult to carry on. 
the reason that is is if you have a look at these tyres and I don't want to digress away from the terrain response which you're dealing with but they're all interlinked in a way as we started coming up this hill the tyres have filled up with mud they started to lose traction with the ground we've kept the throttle low which means we're not going very fast which means that the tyres are now full of mud on the rear and on the front which is what's triggered the traction control to come in oh, yeah. very early on and start working to allow the wheels to spin a bit and then braking the wheels and getting that drive moving across so what we're going to see in a minute when you set off again is probably a little bit more of what the car really can do in mud and ruts it's chilled it's happy but it will be trying to move the drive across the axles putting the lockers in and trying to get you to the top of this hill to the best of its ability we still want to see what the car can do as opposed to the driver at this stage so i'm going to ask you to pull off from here very very gently i don't want a lot of throttle at all okay it's a very gentle throttle and see how we get on okay gentle throttle gentle throttle just a limb okay so let's see how this works now then so instruction from billy we're going to go for gentle throttle steering is straight we're going up that quite steep hill here I can feel that I've got still some 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 spin going on. So we're not going very far nope. at the minute. What else can we do? Remember, there's a few things we can do in mud to try and help us. We could deflate the tires, gives a bit of extra grip. We can also start moving the steering wheel to try and give out. What I don't want to do is give it any more revs at yep. this stage. Let's see the system working. We're going to have a walk around the vehicle when you go off this time to see what's happening with the wheels all around the vehicle. We'll see that drive bouncing and moving around, trying to get you out of here. But just hold it steady on the revs, giving the wheel a little bit of turning left and right to try and get a bit of bite to keep us going uphill. Um, it may get us up or this may be as far as a vehicle can go. If it is, we'll need driver intervention. We'll go down and we'll have another go. Yeah, okay, okay let's try that then. So, we're only about um, a third of the way up the hill. We're in drive. We're gonna still just keep it as a gentle throttle and we're gonna sort of just pull away gradually. I'm gonna do a little bit of steering perhaps to the left and to the right. It doesn't seem to want to get an awful lot of grip or traction there. In fact, interestingly, the, the lockers I can see are coming in and out. So we've now gathered that that's as far as a vehicle can go. The only other option we've got is to go really good and old fashioned as we did with the series Land Rover and start rocking the vehicle from <laughs> yeah. side to side as you're going up. We won't be doing that today. Now, when you're ready, into reverse, hill descent will be on. Beat off all the pedals and okay. let the vehicle go back. Again, we're now going into the electronics. Most people find this next bit very hard. They want to cover the brake and touch the brake when they're going down downhill. If you're touching the brake, it deactivates hill descent control. You take over. Yes. And you're braking all four wheels. Hill descent control will brake each wheel independently, allowing the vehicle to go back and giving you steering, more importantly, to go back where you need to be. I'm going to go back down the, the track. The quick checks you need to do is to know where your wheels are. Now, you're lucky you've got an in, in graphics. Yep. And your steering wheel helping you as well. So your wheel's straight. There is nothing behind. When you're ready, window up off the pedals and just take it straight back okay let's trust in the dynamics of the system foot's going off i'm keeping it completely away and i can feel that it's gradually taking me back down the hill in a controlled way okay if you jump out a second switch off and jump out a second we'll go up and have a look at what's happening there Because from here it started well, and I was listening to it, it started well, and then we cut off of it. And it's asking a lot, because you see how slippy it is already going up. This is a fair old test for it. 
So we want to be, by here, we want to be full power on. Now you know you're coming up to here. And at this point, you tend to start moving the wheel yep. even faster. And you're putting that power on slightly too late to, to get us over. The work's got to be done back here to be fully up with your revs. And it needs to be a straight steering wheel still here because that tendency to go right unbalances the car. So it tilts across this way a little bit, losing the traction on there. And we see there's a tree root there anyway, but it's losing the traction on there. And then we get the full spin where if we can keep the car as straight as we can, and then we put the steering on slightly later to keep us going because your rear diff lock locker is on, it's going to push us up anyway, this bit. So you've, you're counterintuitive as you're going. The back's pushing. You're putting steering on when we don't really need it on, a little bit of right. So you're trying to push the car with the wheels slightly at an angle, which making it harder for it to go off. If the wheels were square, we may get it. So we'll give it one more go. You've seen what you're asking it to come up over. A slippery rock here as well. You've got the rock, you've got the tree root. And we're just bringing up a couple of tree roots on this side as well. Here we go. Right, third time lucky. Let's see if we can actually get right the way uh, to the top this time. Here we go. Give it some power, then keep the wheels straight as we can this time. So with a little bit more driver intervention there and holding the revs on, he's managed to clear the obstacle. So the slightest twist of the wheel not being in, in, in alignment, you're not going to get up with it. Working with all the systems working together, we see he did the job. Well done. One happy driver. How was that, Billy? It felt good to me that time with a bit of extra power and a bit more, uh, a bit more go to it. As we asked for, and less steering. So when you drove over the storm, when you're over the storm, you were no... almost thinking again when you went over the storm. Where yep. do I go now? But yeah, we held on. How did it feel in the settings? It, it. Um... I, again, I could feel, especially when I pulled away, it allowed, it allowed the tyres to spin a little bit and to actually sort of move some of that mud out the way. Um, and then, and then again, I could sort of, I could feel as well. Each of the wheels were gripping and slipping at certain points as I went over those different sort of undulations. Well, you were undulating quite a lot. Yeah. There, and where dynamic stability control would cut in, even though we've turned it off, it's still running a little bit in the background. But you felt that cut in. Yes. Because we had it switched off. It meant you could get over so it wasn't being there to save you so if we, we can put dynamic stability control back on okay don't forget to subscribe to get notified on the next part in this series of videos where we will cover more terrain response modes including rock crawl